Hi, this is Paul Carlson, CPA with AE Velocity. In this video, we're going to take a look at entering timesheets into Azure. So once we're logged into Azure, this is so we're working with a sample database. Go Ninja Star. We're going to go time and expense. On some newer versions of Azure, there's a second option that says time or timesheets. We're not real fond of that right now, so we keep using this time and expense button. And from here, you can see your timesheets and you can create timesheets. So I'm logged in as an admin user, so I have additional windows. Normal users will just have this option to see their own timesheets. So within Azure, all the good stuff is behind the blue plus sign. So let's hit that. And so let's turn on these additional columns so we can keep track of which timesheets are submitted, when our timesheets are supervisor approved, and when our timesheets are accounting approved. So click OK. And so this way, as timesheets are built through the system and you log in every week, you can see that last week, the supervisor approved your timesheet. From this list, Azure likes to show timesheets for the last four weeks. So if you want to see existing timesheets from prior, we can change the view and you can select whatever date period you want to see. We're just going to leave this the way it is for now. To create a new timesheet, click New and it's going to offer a period ending date that's gonna be seven days or a week after the last created timesheet. And Azure has defined weekly reporting periods, so you're only gonna be able to pick the last day of the period. So there's a very frustrating piece, or, and within this, there's this option to copy a timesheet. So what this will do is I can say copy, create, To create a new timesheet, we click New. And Azure uses predefined reporting weeks. So the default will be a week after the last created timesheet that you're forced to use the um, predetermined week periods. And then there's this copy timesheet that gets a lot of people excited until they see how this really works. So what this would do is I can copy this timesheet but all it's going to do is it's going to copy the existing projects that were used on the prior week that it's not going to copy over time. That there's some firms where project managers touch each project for the same amount of time on the same day every week and they want the time pre-populated. Azure works a lot with federal contractors and copying time I don't think the DCAA auditors would be fond of. So we're actually not gonna create a timesheet because you don't wanna watch me type. Let's hit cancel. Let's click into this existing timesheet to see how we enter time. So within Azure, um, entering project time is probably the most straightforward piece that you receive a predefined list of all the projects you can bill into. And this is um, predictive search. So if you type in Wilson, it's already giving you the project name. So you don't have to fish through lists. Then for phase, within the work breakdown structure, you can select the phase that you're billing into. And then activity, this is company specific. A lot of times we will just have one activity that's gonna be like project time. And that's all you will need to select from here. And then there you enter your time. But note, you enter the time here and then the description on the time goes down here. And so that's a little different. You see the first couple of times. Um, let's see here, I jumped. There's also a blue plus sign here. We typically don't turn on much of this, so we can just leave that off. So that's regular project time. Down below we have all of the overhead items. So we have admin or general time, holiday, marketing, uh, meeting, vacation. So just a couple of comments on what we typically see incorrect with timesheets. So one, all project time must go on projects. So if a project is over budget, it's closed, still that time needs to go on that project, that there's additional project profitability reports that come out of Azure. And it's very important that all project time goes on the specific project. 
An issue that we often see with timesheets is that it seems the time posted into holiday, sick, and vacation is often wrong. That we'll see people will go on vacation and they'll post vacation time as holiday. Um, so vacation is when you are using up your allocation of 80 hours of vacation for the year. Holiday is when the office is closed for Thanksgiving. Not sure why those get always turned around. And sick will get kind of get mixed in there. So before you're done with your timesheet, please make sure that um, you're using the right sick vacation or holiday timeline. Other thing that is probably more complicated with Hajira is there's three or four different ways you can post marketing time. So the most common one is just general marketing time. And so this is um, just doing general lead development that you post the time here. Some firms will create a project for each bid and proposal that they're creating. And within that project, they will create a business development phase and all the time for that proposal will go on to this phase. Other firms will create, instead of creating a proposal project for every proposal they do, some firms will create a general business development project and then with a generic general business development phase. And so all proposal time would go into that specific phase. Well, other firms will say, you know, we like the idea of not creating specific projects for every proposal, but we do want to track time by specific proposal. So what we'll do is we will create this general business development project, but within that we will create a phase for each proposal we're working on. And so here we've selected that phase. So you want to, if you're working on marketing projects or bid and proposals, you want to understand how your specific company wants that time um, posted, that these different options flow through to the income statement and other reports very differently. And so you don't want to guess, you want to make sure exactly how the company wants you to do it. And when everything is complete, you have your 40 hours in for the week, go ahead and hit submit. And once submit is clicked, there's approval processes where first your supervisor will see your timesheet and approve it, which when that is done, this box up here will show as marked. And then the accounting department will also review the timesheet. And when that is done, that this box will be checked. And with that, this is a quick introduction of how to enter timesheets within Dell Tech Azure. This video is a part of our Dell Tech Azure new user training course that there's links within the description that will take you to the full free course on our website. Thanks.